66% of eligible voters took part in the 2020 presidential election. That was the highest turnout rate for any presidential election since the year 1900. 46% of eligible voters took part in the 2022 midterm elections, which was the highest turnout for a midterm since 1970. Over the last three election cycles, participation in the United States elections has been higher than average, which is good news. Unless you're Matt Walsh, those numbers are a bit too high for his liking. Let's hear what he had to say. We should really be talking about this. That there are a lot of people who are voting in this country who should not have that right. They don't deserve it. And as I've tried to explain many times, the right to vote, it is not a God-given right guaranteed to everybody regardless of anything. It's not. Okay, it, 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 it's, not, it's not fundamental to your human nature that you automatically are entitled to um, have a say over the you know, political system in your country. These people should not be allowed to vote. I mean, you hear people say that in a half-joking way. Oh, I can't believe these people can vote. But, but really, they shouldn't be able to. Like, actually, they should not be able to vote. It's no secret that uh, American conservatives hate democracy. They talk about it all the time, but usually they're a little bit more subtle in how they want to depress votes and uh, stop certain people from voting. Very rarely do they come right out and say, yeah, people shouldn't have the right to vote the way Matt Walsh did. It's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I'll talk to you, Desmond. What, what do you think Matt Walsh is trying to do here? Why is he going uh, full mask off like this? I mean... We've been seeing this for a long time now, right? The Republicans are adequately aware of the fact that their voter base is shrinking. It's just shrinking yes. all over the place. Like they have a really big block of older voters who, you know, like, I don't mean this in any kind of like you know, defamatory way, but they are slowly dying and their what? younger and their younger voters out there are like three to one, four to one leaning left. And Unlike in the past in America, where as people would get older, they'd become conservative, not the case for millennials and Gen Zs. They are staying on the left. So I, I think what you're seeing here is the Daily Wire has adequately, and, and Matt Walsh particularly here, has adequately you know, like figured out that they have a lot of cultural power on the right right now. They are weaponizing it in every way that you can think of. We think about like Bud Light being attacked. That was mostly coming after them. Hospitals being, having bomb threats coming in. That stuff that's happening at the Daily Wire, talking about transgender bills. Like these are things that the Daily Wire feels as though that they have started these conversations and that they are actually translating into things happening in the rest of the country. So I'm sure that this is something that Matt Walsh and others at the Daily Wire are just trying to put onto the heads of their Republican friends on Capitol Hill. Can we find a way to curb voting? Because it's kind of killing our ability to more or less dominate the country with our orthodoxy. Because we can't seem to get around the fact that what we want for the American people, they don't really seem to want for themselves. But who cares about being popular when you can just dominate and just take over the ability to vote in the first place? Let's just find different ways to gerrymander certain people out, You know, take away people's rights so they can't can't vote at all and this is just the next evolution of that but maybe there's a little bit more to their sinister plan i mean john you're kind of the daily wire expert here so i feel like we should really go to you for how is how is matt walsh thinking like what's going through his can, brain right can now? we not give me the epithet daily wire expert like, <laughs> too late too late no one is it's there it's there see our next segment for more <laughs> um, that is that's a good call out desmond we did uh, have a whole like half hour long conversation about all the daily wire members so definitely yeah. you know hit that subscribe button and wait for that later in the week because it will be coming out but um we here's my thoughts on on this you kind of said oh we want to put this into the heads of the conservative politicians no i think it's the other way around i think that the daily wire has become the Let's shift the Overton window as far right as we possibly can. Like, I think that it's the GOP that's saying, hey, guys, we're going to donate to you. We're going to give you money. We're, we're, we're going to make sure you're funded. Um, and the GOP, you know, as well as, you know, the ultra wealthy, the, the billionaire class, all that. And we know that, like, these ideas that we want to implement aren't very democratically popular. So let's shift the Overton window and start a whole Bud Light craze over people shouldn't vote anymore. If it doesn't work, that's cool. We're, the Daily Wire isn't officially associated with the Republican Party. They aren't 
the Fox News, who at least has to pretend to be a news channel, like <laughs> they are what they are. They, they have no accountability. And so they can throw out these things like that. And there is a significant portion of their base who genuinely believe it. Yeah. And that's a problem. Like, it's a massive problem. I've been saying this for a while. That, like a lot is, you know, especially Michael Knowles and whatever, like Matt Walsh, I really don't know. He's definitely a fascist, though. Like, like he this is a fascist belief this is like kind of what we said previously with the book burnings it's like that's what fucking nazis do you you know what else nazis do they take away your right to vote how can you possibly like if you are an average american i just don't understand this like i can understand being transphobic i i disagree with it i think it's wrong but like i at least get like like the oh i'm i i'm scared of this minority group like i i can understand it but just the fundamental you shouldn't have a right to vote like i don't understand how that doesn't set off every red flag that is available to you to be like hey maybe these guys don't have the best interests of the people in mind uh i think that sets off zero red flags for republicans i mean i mean having (laughs) having been i mean zero because they to their core they actually think this like i mentioned how many times have you heard a conservative say you know, this yeah. is not a democracy. This I knew what you were going to say before they, you they, even said it. Yes, like they they say it all the time. Like one, it's inaccurate. You know, a rectangle is a square. A square is not a rectangle. You know, all that and so on and so forth. But they really hate the idea of democracy, and they they say it. But when you corner them on it, they try to say, "Oh, that's not that's not what I mean." No, that that, that is what you mean. What I like to what, the example I like to use for it is a uh, well. It's also funny that they always have the bumper stickers that say "We the People." It's like, okay, so do you want the people to have a say, and like, do you want things run by the people? Because it doesn't sound like it. And Matt Walsh mentions uh, uh, in that clip that uh, first he says, "You know, there is no God-given right to vote." Oh, all right, you're, that's right. God didn't give a shit. All right, that's true. That's true. Like, in, in, in the Bible, God never once gave his people the right to vote. It's not there. So it's not a, you're right. Not, not, re- not really his style. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that one, Matt Walsh, but not that I give a shit. And then he says that, you know, you do not have an intrinsic right uh, as a person in society to, like, have a say in the politics of the society. It's like, okay, uh, now, I heard somewhere, sometime when I was in school, that something like power is derived from the just consent of the governed. I thought that's what I learned. Maybe I made that up on the spot. I don't know. But you I'm pretty sure. one of those sure. fancy liberal schools. One of those fancy lib schools, yeah, that told me, you know, what the founding fathers said and everything. <laughs> and if, and the governed are the ones who get to vote. And I, this is the example I use all the time, is that they love the word tyranny. They love saying yep. we are, we need to protect ourselves from tyranny. And my bulletproof, use it, folks, bulletproof argument. There's no way around it. Ask them what is the best example of tyranny. The best example would be an actual tyrant. One person who makes all the rules, does whatever he wants, completely unchecked. The exact opposite of that would be like, you know, the, a full democracy where all the decisions are made by all the citizens and they all vote. So if you're going to limit uh, our involvement to minor- minoritarian rule, the minority gets to, to vote, is that closer to a tyrant or to democracy? It's closer to a tyrant. Like, you guys are arguing for tyranny. You do it all the time, and they, they just don't care. They they Because, like you guys said, uh, they know that they're outnumbered. Like, if they had the numbers, they wouldn't be talking about this shit at all. They, they wouldn't. But they know that, you know, their, their voting base is dying off, and... You know, you know what's weird? They they realize academically that young people are not voting for conservatives. They're not growing to vote for conservatives. And still, they do everything in their fucking power to shit on young people, call them lazy, call them stupid, yep. call them entitled. It's like, do you want these votes or not? Because you're not acting like you do. And so they're like, okay, well, we'll raise the voting age. She's like, yeah, okay. It's like, make them take tests and take away the rights. Like, that's not a sustainable plan. Like, you guys are going to be dead eventually. That plan is going to go away, even if you enact it, which you won't. But it's just wild. I, it's, it's, it's crazy to hear people, like, you know, say it so forcefully. You know, my pessimism comes out with stories like this. And I, I try to check it as much as I can, but it, it's really hard for me because 
you know, all the time I want to believe that there is some kind of ideology on the right, like some kind of consistent ideology, but you have a really hard time finding it because if you really believed that a tyrannical government was a problem, which is why you believe so strongly in the Second Amendment, you wouldn't be taking away someone's rights to vote because, again, you'd be afraid of a tyrannical government, but yet here we are. And then also talking about like finding like the youth vote. They obviously don't really care about reaching out to young people. Like, no, like you were saying, TJ, no. like, they really don't care. They're demonizing TikTok. They'll demonize anything. I just don't think that they have any real agenda to make their uh, party more palatable to people. They don't want to actually become more popular. They just want to make sure it's harder to get people who disagree with them to be able to take them out of power in the first place. And, you know, time and time again, like the things we're hearing from Matt Walsh, that's the narratives coming out. It's never about how can we grow this Republican Party. It's oh, always God. just like, how can we keep people from taking us out? That seems like the mm -hmm. only thing that they really are interested in. I mean, we've talked several times today about like paradoxes in conservative belief, and that's one of them. Like we talk about the young people, like they want to appeal to their base. What do old people like to complain about? They like to complain about young, young people. people. Who's their base? It's old people. Oh, but we also want to grow into the future. Oh, fuck. Well, we've made too much fun of the young people. Let's just not let them vote. You know, and, that, and that's that's becoming a bigger thing of raising the vote. I'm someone yep. who thinks the voting age should be lowered. If you're paying taxes, you are working at the age of 16 years old and you're paying goddamn income tax, you better fucking believe you should have, you should have a vote. Uh, taxation without representation. It's such a fundamental, obvious thing to me. Ooh. And it blows my mind that people are like, oh, we should take voting. The problem with this country is that not enough people, is that too many people are voting. Too many idiots are voting. And it's like, is that really the problem? Is that really the problem? Or is the problem that our votes don't mean shit? The, the, it, it, like, that's the problem. Because not enough people are voting. If everyone voted, we'd get more shit done in this country. But only a small minority of people vote. And right now they're old people. But those All old right. people, as we said, only have certain lifespan. And it's in order for the GOP to continue to win after that base dies, they need to do things like this. And it's exactly what like the you're, you guys are looking for consistency. There is consistency, but it's not the consistency that we're thinking of. They all know, like they all intrinsically know, and like the, the you know, the, the masses might not all understand this, but like all, all the people at the top, they know that they want to exert minority control over the majority. They That is their end goal. That is their fascist belief that they can be the enlightened despot and take us to the promised land. And their people want someone to follow to do that and just blame the other people. And this happens every time there's a fascist uprising. There's a, every time there's a fascist takeover, they blame a small group and they start with that one. And then that group slowly expands and expands and expands until suddenly there's one goddamn Aryan race. And if you're not a part of it, you can go hop in the shower. Like that's that's what happens. And this is the start of it. And the fact that like we don't teach that shit in schools means that we're going to continuously be duped by it over and over again. You I, know, I do I have. I agree. Go ahead. I was going to say I do have one quick thing to say. I mean, if they really want to implement tests for who's allowed to vote and who's not allowed to vote, I just have one question. I want to make sure that's on the test. And I want to be, you know, who won the twenty twenty election? I think that should be an important <laughs> thing to be on the test if you really want to be able to vote. You got to know who won the election. And, you know, important things. Max, don't know. care about your feelings, doesn't he? <laughs> what were you going to say, TJ? I said I agree with the uh, if you're paying income tax, you should be able to vote. And I will go a step further. I think that if the Republicans are going to state that a 10 year old girl is uh, can be a mom. Well, guess what? She can vote, too. I mean, if we're going to if she's going to handle an adult responsibility like that. You're telling me she can't vote. Fuck you. And so, yeah, it's 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 crazy to me how how they just are pushing young people away. And I, what I say is that, well, Desmond, you were talking about uh, how you don't understand like uh, why they're so focused on this when they know that, you know, they're unpopular. And I, in a way I kind of do understand in a weird way, because let's say, for example, that we were in a minoritarian group. <laughs> we are, but I mean, we were in a minoritarian group. <laughs> let's let's that... say, for example, we're minorities. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> Sorry, Stay with me. Stay with me. Straight face for that yeah. one. Yeah. Go but ahead. Uh, like, 
we are part of a, a group of people and we believe murder is wrong. Like, like, you know, and then there was like, there was ritualized murder that was legal in every state in the country where you could just like, if someone pissed you off, you, you pull out swords or guns and you were just shooting people. And you're like, listen, this is fucked up. We need to put a stop to this. But everyone thought you were crazy. And there's, there's, there's only like 15% of us in the country who are fighting against this. Like it really wouldn't matter. Like what, what we had to do to stop the ritualized murder, we would do it. And that's kind of how they're looking at it. And, and of course, the stuff they're worried about is, is nonsense. But that's they're they're looking at like their deeply held beliefs are you know being you know flouted every single day. And and uh, John, you mentioned something about how you actually I don't remember the segment or not, but uh, you were mentioning about how you understand how people are you know conflicted or weirded out by a transgender issue. I agree. I, I agree because uh, it's pretty new for like common society like it wasn't it was a, it was a joke it was something that you you made fun of until just a few years ago and for 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 the populace and uh i i don't expect an 80 year old man to understand why his like grandson is an uwu cat girl now like i get why that throws him off i get why that's weird and it's just that you <laughs> You got to realize that I, one of these days is going to happen to me where something's going to happen. I was like, wow, that's super weird. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. It's going to happen. And I have one of two options. I can say, OK, listen, the world is moving on with me or without me pretty soon without me. And I can just accept the fact that it's not my my world anymore. It belongs to the young people. Let them do what they're going to do. Or I can make it my entire personality to burn the place to the ground, to keep it what it was like when I was 25 years old. And that's the part I, I, I'm i weirded out by. It's, like, it's not hurting. You. It's not like it's a ritualized murder out there. It's just people, you know, praying to different gods and wearing different clothes than you're used to. And they will do anything to, to hold on to this uh, 1960s lifestyle. It's, it's pretty odd. Yeah, 